everybody. This is Steve Calloway back at it. Uh, yeah, I should have combed my hair sometime today. I don't know. <laughs> Must be I couldn't find the pitchfork. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Enough about me. <laughs> there is one more thing, though. I have not seen this video before, and how I couldn't tell you. I just can't believe the stuff I probably two or three years ago maybe I think I'd probably seen everything because I went on a what do they call it going down the rabbit hole yeah I went down there and dug a home stayed there for quite a long time and you know I I chased every uh, every branch and every twig everywhere every direction I could go to see everything that Angelina had ever done even uh, peripheral things you know like the video I did with the um, Nobel Peace Prize and I did the interview with the recipients, the you know, the son and the daughter of the lady that's in prison, Nargis Comedy. And, um, you know, and then I also did a, the movie that the, the song Unchained Melody was originally written for called Unchained. And it's a 1955 uh, black and white movie. I did that. You know, that's the kind of thing. That's what I say when I chase down the rabbit hole and I go out on branches and twigs. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You go a couple of layers in uh, to see, make sure you have an understanding of the whole thing. Because I really couldn't understand how that little girl could touch my soul like that. I really couldn't. And then when I started listening to her at any age, it doesn't matter, any age, any song, any venue, no venue, uh, just a, just a, uh, like the album It's Magic, which is all just instrumental. You know, it's not instrumental, but it's there's no uh, studio uh, videos. It's just the music and it doesn't really matter it all touches my heart and my soul and I shouldn't say all there's a couple of songs she did that didn't but they weren't meant to be like uh, Above the Water uh, is a an EDM an electric dance music song beautiful did a great job with it for that genre great but it's not the kind of thing that you're looking for a soul touching going on okay uh, but anything that has any sort of a message or usually a personal message about love, relationships, family, whatever it might be. Um, almost all songs and things I did are about love in one way or another. Uh, relationships. It seems like it. You know, not all of them, but a lot of them. So anyway, there you go. So I have not seen this, I, and I can't believe it. So I, I listened to the first few seconds, and I said, no, I have not seen this before or heard this before. I mean, I've heard her sing this song, but not like this. So let us forget about me talking and get on with the show. I'm going to go up here and hide in the corner. Let me start that back over again. Let's listen and watch. I'll get in the proper corner. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know Where the tree stops glisten And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow
trees tops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow stop it here for a second. So I have seen this song, Silent Night, uh, on this TV show. This is a Norwegian TV uh, program. But I had never seen this first one before, uh, White Christmas, at this uh, TV show. But I did recognize the two hosts. And then the next one, Silent Night, this is this Silent Night version is... You know, this one, this one, White Christmas, we're listening to an eight-year-old angel sing, an eight-year-old. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, her voice and her, her just her emotional attachment and her putting her back into it, man. She's out there giving it her all. And for us, for, for, well, partially for just the love of singing, you know, maybe all of it's just for love of singing. We happen to be a witness to it. I don't know. But it's, it's uh, I, I don't know what to say, you know. I get emotional because it's a little girl up there doing that. And that takes something, you know. Not everybody can do that. I know there's a lot of great kid singers out there, a lot of great kid singers out there. I've seen them. I saw well, who was uh, Jackie Ivanko there years ago. And um, uh, Hale, there, what was her first name? Um, can't think of it right now. Probably come to me later on. Uh, she was on, I think, AGT, AGT at one point. And beautiful voice. There's a lot of young girls, all ages, all the way up through up into adulthood. You know, and they have, well, not just girls, but there's some uh, boy singers too. Seems to be mostly girls, uh, dominated by girl singers. And just, a, you know, they have beautiful, beautiful voices. They really do. And it is a lot of times, it's very touching. And um, I, I, by the way, I forgot probably hundreds of names of the kid singers that are so good. So don't be offended if I didn't say your favorite. Uh, I did, it's not intentional. There's just so many. And I, I recognize that. And I've seen a lot of them. I, I watch other YouTube videos. It's just that you know, I'm an Angelina diehard, uh, biased fan. I, I, I know there's other music out there. There's other great singers, but <laughs> I mean, Angelina does something to me. None of them do. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe I have a. I'm so biased that I've closed the door to other other great singers. I don't know. I hope not. I'd rather be open-minded, but. Um, what it does to me is what it does to me, and she's the only one that consistently is able to touch my soul. So, and you guys, a lot of you guys are here for the same reason, because it's, it's, you have similar experience, or, you know, close to it. So, it's not a contest. It just is what it is. And, uh, so, this set, <laughs> I started tearing up, and I had to talk my way out of it, um, uh, when I was introduced, you know, talking about Silent Night coming up next. It's just such a, it's like a, yeah, I hate to use the word perfect, well, I should scratch that. I don't hate anything. I, I should train myself not to use the word perfect too often. 
because I think it's overused sometimes, especially by me. And what is perfect? Sometimes it's subjective. So then one person's perfect, the exact same thing is not perfect to another person. So it kind of gives a, uh, I, I mean, like an absolute connotation, perfect, right? Like it's the only thing that's perfect. Well, a lot of things can be perfect to different people in different ways and different types and blah, blah, blah. You know, the same thing can be perfect to one and not to another. So is it actually perfect? Who knows, right? This is a philosophical discussion now that we've gotten into. Before we get to Simon, <laughs> I have talked myself out of the uh, couldn't talk part with the tears and all that. Uh, but it'll be back in a minute as soon as we get the song going. And, uh, you know, it's just that I guess there's something about when you're, when you're uh, awestruck by a moment where it dawns on you that this is something that's, uh, you know, it's way, way past, uh, uh, I don't know, what would you call it? What, what, what one might think would be possible. Uh, under normal circumstances, so it, it's so far beyond. It's almost like standing in a, if you if you believe in God, it's almost like you're standing in the presence of God, you know, and listening to this uh, one of His many angels sing with His nod, you know. If you you know, depending on how you depict the whole thing in your mind, you know, His nod of recognition and approval, right? So, you know, and then you you happen to be for whatever reason, why you? Why are you there listening to that? What gives you that uh, special specialness that you get to hear that? Well, Angelina will sing for anybody. She'll sing in the parking lot. Somebody just walking by will catch, catch her singing. She doesn't care what she sings to. She sings because she loves singing. And that love, that type of love like that, where she just loves singing, and doesn't any, nothing else really is that important to her, that, uh, well, besides her, like her family, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm talking other things, but, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really incredible when you see that and you witness it and you look at it and you recognize it, it's like, man, that is something special there. It's not just a beautiful singer. There's so much more there. And that's what a lot of the other singers, in my opinion, and from my observation, they have sometimes in certain performances that they will reach those levels. So they, the potential they have is there with them. Uh, especially because they have a beautiful voice. But some, sometimes they don't, like Angelina seems to be able to tap that anytime she wants and does most of the time. Whereas uh, the others can on occasion and uh, get awful close sometimes too, but not quite there. So anyway, that's just my observation. I don't know whether it's, you know, some might agree, some will disagree, and some don't care to even think about it. So. I just want to listen to the song, Steve. Quit talking. All right. Well, I'm going to quit talking right now, okay? Let's listen to Silent Night. And this is outstandingly beautiful. And I am going to use the word perfection. Uh, it's just, and the way that the TV station set it all up, it's so, it's it's like just right, you know? I guess they know what they're doing. So time. 
I'm playing it again in full screen, so I'm out of the picture. And uh, this time I'm going to do that because I don't deserve to be in the picture. I've done nothing to sit here in the presence of an angel singing. So we're going to go full screen. You guys will have maximum viewing and listening pleasure. I will not talk for the both either song or in between. So enjoy enjoy the performance. I'll be here. I'm going to be here listening to the whole thing. I'm in the background. The camera's still running and all that, but it just doesn't come up on top. And um, so I can't get it to do that. But in this particular case, I don't want it to do that even if I could. I, as a matter of fact, if I could, I think I would let my take my picture out anyway. Because I really don't believe that I... I can't think of anything that I've done. Days 
down out of uh, full screen I guess so you can see me whimpering and crying over here yeah I'm gonna cut this short I think the just to comment on the last uh, the last video silent night you know you you look at Angelina she's an eight-year-old girl right you watch her feet you know while she's waiting when the other two people are singing and she's she's patiently waiting her turn patiently and anxiously <laughs> waiting her turn to sing again and she's got her feet and she's got up on the toes on one foot that she crosses her feet at one point and it's you know like that's an eight-year-old girl right there doing that that's that's the eight-year-old girl part is her feet right the rest of her is paying attention because she knows she's going to come back in here any minute right and uh you know you know i, I just I, it's you know that i guess the reason part of the reason I, I don't know why i get emotional but part of it might be the you know, I, I, I really don't, you know, I, I don't really, <laughs> people comment to me about this, and I'm not looking for people to, uh, uh, encourage me. I am generally a positive person. I generally have a fairly high opinion of myself, I think, not, and maybe too much, maybe too much sometimes. But in a case like this, Angelina, you know, I really have done nothing to earn a ticket to this show, the Angelina show with these two songs right here with this angel singing, you know? You know, it's the kind of ticket that you can't buy. You have to earn somehow, and I don't believe I've done enough. I don't know. I'm just so lucky to be here. And most of it occurred by happenstance. I just stumbled on Angelina one day. Nine-year-old Angelina, would I put a spell on you about six years ago, I guess. And happenstance.
I started this channel March of this of 2023, this year. March 3rd, I posted my first video after two years of sitting around thinking about it. How to do it, what to do, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I had absolutely no computer skills whatsoever. But I was able to get on YouTube and uh, fire up a channel, which is all free, doesn't cost anything. And it sat there for two years with dust on it with not a thing, single thing posted. And the reason is, I didn't really know what to do. I knew I wanted to cover some Angelina videos, but I also didn't want to, um, what did you call it, D disrespect her by doing a poor job, okay? I still got a lot of work to do as far as quality of my stuff. But I also am, I've told you this before, I'm half Irish and half Dutch, which I jokingly say sometimes makes me stupid and stubborn. <laughs> stupid being the Irish part, stubborn being the Dutch part. And uh, my mother used to say something similar to me all the time. And, you know, I, I, there's just certain things that I need to do a certain way because I don't know any different way to do it. Sometimes I just jump in both feet. I don't even do any preparation. I just dive in. Why? Because it gets rid of all that stuff ahead of time that probably wouldn't have mattered much anyway. When I posted the first video, just a quick story that I'm going to get out of here. I don't want to take too much of your time. The first video I posted, the first many, quite a few videos, in fact, they're still on the website way back at the beginning. <laughs> I pulled up an Angelina video on the screen. I don't remember if the first one was an Angelina video. I think I might have done a few other ones before that of who knows what, I don't remember. Um, but I put, I got a big screen TV, so I put uh, pulled up a YouTube video of Angelina singing, put it at the beginning, I put my my uh, smartphone on a tripod, which I already had the tripod, and I, I had to go buy a bracket so it would be on there right. And I moved the camera in close enough to the TV so that the screen, the TV screen took up the whole camera so it looked like it was on my phone, which it wasn't. It was the phone taking a video of the TV. So. <laughs> and where that showed up is when there was something written because it was backwards. Uh, but... Also, I didn't have the camera. I didn't have the way to put my picture in there. I did. I didn't. It took me a long time to learn how to do that. And I still don't think I'm doing it right. But I, it's working. So I'm doing that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So the uh, uh, so when it came time, when it came time for me to talk, I, I tried all kinds of different ways. So you can picture this scene now. That my big screen TV is. You know, it's not too far off the floor. I mean, it's maybe this. Oh, I don't know, maybe 18 inches off the floor, maybe, and then it's a big screen TV on a, on a, a big stand. So my camera is set up on a tripod, not that far away from the TV, really. You'd be surprised how close you got to get to fill the whole screen in. And so when it's my turn to talk, I, I tried bending over and sticking my head around the corner. Hey, this is Steve. <laughs> I did that on some videos. I tried laying down on the floor and then popping up like a Pop Goes the Weasel. I tried that method. Uh, I tried just walking around and then bending over. You know, I tried, I tried all kinds of different things. And <laughs> I, I was never happy with any of them, really, although they got the job done. But it's like, at some point, you just say, well, I got to say something. They should be able to see me. So if this is all we can do, I think a couple of them I stood up and I stuck my head around the corner, kind of upside down, sideways at an angle kind of thing. So that's how it started, and from there, I just determined that every day I'm going to try to evolve a little bit, try to get a little bit better. And eventually, you know, now I've come to here, and I am nowhere near done, and I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I've come a long ways, I think. And uh, my latest challenge has been the technical aspects of having shaky video or, or jerky video. And I haven't been able to solve it yet, and I've tried a lot of different things, but... Now I'm going to keep working on it. Hopefully I can get it down. Other people don't have the problem. So I'm, I guess I've decided it's isolated to my me and my computer and my saw, the programs that I'm using. So, because it's not the videos I'm taping, because they're, they're good. This one here, beautiful. 
not not a not a wiggle or anything on these. Okay, so you know if I go over to mine and it starts getting jerky, it's, it's nothing. It has nothing to do with the video. Probably has nothing to do with the recording. It has to do with when it goes from the recording to the film editor. That's where I think the glitch is, and I I don't know. I'll have to keep working on it. But anyway. For one, I was going to end soon. It didn't happen, did it? You know, I got a way of stretching things out. So, anyway, I, I like to tell some of those stories only because it kind of tells you, you know, a little bit more about me. It's the same thing when we watch the Angelina videos, the ones from when she was uh, younger and the behind-the-scenes stuff, the rehearsals and all the other things. You know, you learn a lot about a person, about how they handle just regular, normal situations. Anybody can put on a face for a camera. I don't, I don't do that. This is me. For those that met me up in New Hampshire... You, what you see is what you get. You know, I'm the same sitting right here talking to you right now as I was up there as I, I would be if I met you at Walmart in the shopping line. Okay, this is me. I'm not acting. I'm not putting on a face. I'm not trying to be anybody else. I want to be me. And that's being authentic to me. Something about when people are authentic and you get to watch raw footage of whatever they're doing, to me that's the best. And that's just my brain, the way it functions. When you put on a plastic face and a plastic smile and, you know, you read perfectly and you have perfect diction and all the words are right and, and you know, you can see where there's little chops where they edit and, you know, put things together and all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't, I don't, to me, that's just anybody. Anybody should be able to pull that off, okay? And do they mean it? Do they remember the words? Were the words their words or was somebody did somebody write them a script? You know, then all these questions come in. But when something's raw and authentic, then like with Angelina, I feel like she's my granddaughter. I feel like she's, I'm part of the, we're, we're part of the same family together, which we kind of are, the family of human beings, right? But um, the more you know about somebody, the more you see them, the more you see them growing up and how they do things, the, the, the more bonded you become with them. I, I suppose that could be with anybody, right? And then you have, I don't know about you, but I have relatives that I don't see hardly ever maybe around holiday time maybe not it all depends we used to get together all the time the whole the whole shebang uh all the relatives but that uh, you know slowly that fades away some people pass away some people move away uh, they get their own lives they got other things going on you know so things start to pull apart a little bit but we used to be our tradition in our family uh we, you know we all got together uh uh it used to be we all got together at one or the other of the, the main members of the family, their houses. took t We took rotational turns uh, hosting uh, Christmas Day dinner for the family. And that evolved over the years, too, to, to, to being a different thing. And then my mother started a tradition where Christmas Eve, all the guests, the uh, family, uh, people that were going to come in to, to, to visit and so on, they all met Christmas Eve together as we all be, got to be adults and there weren't, you didn't, you didn't have to put toys together all night and wrap stuff all night. That was already all done, right? So, and then Christmas Eve, we opened up the presents that we exchanged amongst ourselves. And we also had, my mother made her famous lasagna that has the pepperoni on it. That was a big hit. She also had shrimp and other things too, but uh, lasagna was always a big hit. It was a traditional dish that got served in our family. I could not tell you why, because we're Irish and Dutch. Why we're here in lasagna, I don't know. Uh, I guess the, uh, what was it? The chicken and dumplings was a, was a big Dutch favorite, I think. Might have been Irish, I don't know. One or the other. Used to have that sometimes. Oh, that was good. And um, some of the other. But my mother only had a few things that she cooked, you know, from scratch. The lasagna was the, always the hit of the show. And it was there every year. Tradition. Tradition. All about tradition. Why did I get on to that topic? I don't even remember now. But, I, oh, the family thing. So there's some relatives you don't see very often, right? So then you don't feel as connected. You are connected by blood if they're your relatives, but you don't see them. How about friends that drift away eventually? They don't show up or they don't come or they don't, you know. We had a lot of people who would show up now and announce that we didn't know they were coming. We didn't know if they were going to be there or not, and they would show up. Uh, and over the years, you know, they don't come anymore for whatever reason. Of course, now my mother's been gone for a while, so that's a reason, you know, nobody else has taken up the tradition in my family, including me. I'm not blaming anybody. So, uh, I, I could easily do it. I don't have, it's just me and the two dogs. I could, I could pull something like that off, really, and I know how to cook, so 
Um, I could pull that up pretty easy, but I just haven't. Maybe I should next year, maybe try to plan that. Too late this year. So, uh, that let's move on. I'll get out of here. I'll get out of your hair for the, tonight. I do wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. This is a good time of year. Just It's the end of this 2023 year, uh, coming up on 2024. So you look at 2023 and we'll just look back on it and say, what went right? What went wrong? What can we do different? What should we keep the same? Uh, what can I do to improve uh, my situation? Or to, maybe, maybe it's perfect and just leave it the way it is. Don't break it, okay? So, you know, you look at whatever you have. Be thankful for what you have. Even if you don't feel like you have enough or things aren't quite right, be thankful for what you have because that's all you can, that's all you have, okay? And can you make things better or, or whatever, or, you know, fix things that are broken, whatever it might be? 2024 is waiting for us with open arms. We have a whole year to play with to get to another year. And it's it's all on you, baby. Nobody, nobody Nobody's driving this car but you, okay? So you got to get out there and make it happen if it's going to happen. That's, all, that's my message, I guess. It's always on you. Okay, I believe, you know, I, I say this thing about I'm not worthy, I don't, I've done it. See, the way I look at it, it's not that I'm down on myself, it's not that I don't think that I'm uh, uh, worthy of things, but in special circumstances, you got to wonder how. How did I arrive at this point? I don't remember setting a goal or having it on the list of things to do. I don't remember doing that, okay? It just kind of, it sort of happened, I guess, which is basically life, but, <laughs> you know, for the, I, I, I think that there are equal amounts of good and bad in everything. As a matter of fact, right down to the existence of the atom, which is the smallest building block of anything with substance, okay? An atom exists because it, that there, there's an interaction between negative and positive forces that attract and repel electrons and then they also make them move around and I won't get into the whole thing about subatomic things and all that but th through my research this is the way it is so atoms atoms have to have a negative and positive uh, energy to create uh, eh, it might be a stretch to call it life but it's what makes it function and then as atoms combine with other atoms, then you have substance, whatever it might be, an element or, you know, a tree, a person, okay? And the reason why it works is that in the universe, negative and positive are in a constant state of motion trying to reach basically equilibrium. But it can't be attained. There's no such thing, I don't think, that I'm aware of, that I can think of. Maybe non-existence would be the closest thing. But there's no, there's always this, it always is a little bit positive, a little bit more positive, or a little bit more negative. A little bit this way, a little bit that way. It's like a, those scales, you know, that they're almost like perfectly balanced. And if the wind blows this way just a little bit, oh, it slips this way, you know, back again the other way. That's what we are. We're in a constant a state of flux on that edge all the time. The good, the positive energy, the good energy, the negative energy, the bad energy, if you want to look at them that way, you could look at them as male and female, alpha, omega, you, you know, whatever you want to call it, okay? But the thing is, it's always one way or the other a little bit out of balance. So when you look at a situation, it doesn't really matter what it is. This is Steve the philosopher talking. I have a lifetime of research behind this, but I'm not telling you it's exact, it's not, the, you know, don't listen to me, okay? <laughs> Except for you are right now, you always can click off, okay, if this is too much yakking, yakking. But I believe you can look at, two different people can look at the exact same thing at the, sa the same moment, from the same perspective pretty much, you, you, cannot, you, cannot, you can't occupy the same space, so it won't be exactly the same perspective. But look at something, and one can see it as a positive thing, and one can see it as a negative thing. And you could vary in the strength of the positive and negative in any direction. And why? Because it's a choice. You choose what you see. 
there is an equal amount of uh, negative and positive in everything, I believe. So what do you want to focus on? What do you want to see? What do you want to have around you and surround yourself with? Negativity or positivity? Positive things or negative things? I think most people would want positive things. The negative is still there. Didn't go away. It's still there. But you're not going to give it any energy. You're not going to give it any of your energy. Your energy is going to go into the positive stuff to make that a little bit stronger. Okay, and hopefully you can keep that scale, tip that direction for, for a period of time. And, you know, don't feed the negative energy by being negative. Now, when I said I don't deserve, that's kind of going towards the negative side, the dark side, okay? But I said it for a reason that some things are, they transcend any explanation. They just are. Angelina's an example. You know, I've been trying to find words and trying to explain the closest I can come to is I believe she personifies a, a, a agape love, a pure kind of a love. That's what I think. And she's ha always been that way. It isn't anything that she had to work on or was taught or anything. She's been that way. She was, she came, she was, when she, would, the moment she was conceived, that, that was already there. She was already that way. And... We see it quite often in a lot of little things, especially these little videos behind the scenes and stuff. You know, the rehearsals and all these mo little moments, you know. And then you, you see a song like this and a song like the Silent Night, the next one. There's a certain, there's a certain, to me, it, it's beyond description, but there's, a, there's something more there than just notes and words and Angelina singing. I think most of you would agree with that, but you know, the, then trying to define it, well, that's where we get into trouble. So I'm gonna leave it there now. That, I think I've talked way longer than I should. And I don't wanna get into a bunch of philosophical stuff. I mean, it's everybody has their own beliefs and I believe it's good to have belief in something, okay? So whatever you choose to believe in, uh, believe in it, please do. And uh, if you believe in it enough, you know, believe in it strongly if you can. Because I think having belief in something gives you a solid uh, foundation and a solid base to, to work from. If you don't believe in anything, then you're kind of standing on, uh, shit, you know, rough water sometimes. So we'll leave it like that. And, you know, I wanted to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. And I hope that you embrace your family this time of year, wrap the year up and get ready to move on to the new year, okay? And if you can get together with people you haven't seen for a while or family members or whatever it might be, I think it's a good time of year to do that, right? If not, now when? And that's my message, okay? Positivity, embrace what you have. Cherish what you have. Cherish the moments that you have had. It's okay to look back at the past. You know, now let's look forward to the future. Okay? The future is as bright as you want it to be. Because if you only see the bright and you don't see the darkness, the lights just got brighter. Okay? That's that's what I believe. Okay? Anyway, you guys all have a good time. I'll quit the yakking now. <laughs> I should start another channel. The Steve, the Steve Kelly Yakety Yak channel. I bet you they get a lot of views, huh? All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good day, good night, good morning, whatever it is, wherever you are. We will see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.